Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jumping in an Elevator, uh, the podcast where I full stop famously. Um, I'm back. That's a Roman in Moscow. Moscow? Moscow. Reference for those who don't know. Um, welcome to my podcast. Hope you like it. You ain't leaving. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. Brittany break the ice. It has been a while. We're not going to dwell on that. Like literally all you need to know about my hiatus era is, yeah, I've been working. I've been making moves in silence, but also out loud. And also I've been falling over many times. I don't think I've spoken about the most recent fall. So I thought I would start with that um, because I'm reminded of it every day whenever I look at my drink bottle, the Frank Green with the K-pop stickers on it because mm -hmm, it was in my backpack and I was running across the road and it fucking like, oh my God, this is literally traumatizing to talk about. So I was running late for the tram to go to dance class. It was K-pop dance class and I don't usually do K-pop dance class on this day at this time. Like that's not what I do. But this particular routine, like the teacher had posted on her story and I was like, oh, that's going to like, yeah, that's going to be excellent and I have to go. So I was running late and I was running for the tram and it was one of those situations where in Melbourne, sometimes the tram stops are really far apart, but then sometimes they're really close together. So I was at tram stop one, well, I was going to tram stop one, but the tram had already gone past that but I had to go one block through two sets of traffic lights. And sometimes I can run from one to two and make it. Do I look feral? Yeah, yeah, I do. But can I run? Yeah, which will be spoken about later when I talk about how someone on a bike on drugs chased me to my apartment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, so I was running for the tram and I ran across the intersection and there was a slight change in the level of the ground. And I was not anticipating that. I just wasn't. I was wearing the Air Force Ones. Um, and they just weren't accommodating for that. And I fucking carked it across the road. Yeah, I got made piss. Got made redundant on that road. It was bad. <laughs> My God, it was so bad. And it was also like a Saturday. So there were so many people around. And there was like kind of hotel pub vibes. People just popping pints. Like they were sinking pints at this like little bench. And then imagine you're just like having a pint with the lads and you see this kid. I'm not even a kid anymore. Hello? Like 500 people just walk past the window. They want this story time so bad. Um, I like was spread eagled, truly. So imagine... I'm running, I've got a backpack on, I'm wearing a hat. Of course, I always dance with a hat on. Like we don't want strays flying around in the recording. Like, let's be serious. Like this is not juvenile shit. Then I had my phone and what else did I have? I think that was it. Maybe I had the earphones connected. I think so. That's irrelevant. Anyway, so I fell over and the phone went flying into the intersection, nearly got run over by a car. That was fun. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if I cracked it. I don't think I cracked it. Bitch, you got cracks? I don't think she's cracked. And I did have this phone when it happened. Maybe I broke the case. Anyway, I fell sideways. So I kind of like slid in the car goes, blood running down my leg on the inside from like gravel burn. I rolled my ankle and I fell onto my side and then kind of landed on my back, if that makes sense. And the drink bottle was in there and I broke the steel drink bottle. That's how much my big fat ass like made impact with the ground. Like it was serious. And I broke the straw off the lid. So if you think of a Frank Green, where you have like the steel case and then you have the lid and the straws attached to the lid, the straw fucking just boom, gone. And I knew this because I got up and I tried to like make it look like I wasn't in pain. And I like kept running like, oh my God, maybe I'll still make the tram. But this time it was like, gadoink, gadoink, gadoink in my bag because the fucking metal straw and the metal drink bottle was just rolling around. 
God. So like there was blood everywhere and I didn't make the tram. No, did I make the tram? Wait, no, I made the tram. The reason why I can't remember this is because it was literally like months ago and I semi-blocked it from the memory. I made the tram. Wait, that was crazy. I made the tram and I was like, yeah, like that was so like whatever. Like everyone's like looking at me and I'm like, <sighs> like huffing and puffing, fucking blood everywhere. Standard, honestly, for that tram number. And then I realized that I couldn't walk. I think the ad- adrenaline got me to the tram and then I got off at the next stop and I went and got bubble tea and I just gave up. And then I called my dad and I was like, hey, I think I fucking broke my foot. So that was fun. I also had another injury when I was getting ready to go somewhere and I have these like shoe racks and my pinky toe got stuck in one of the shoe racks as I was like walking really fast past it, fast pass, Disney fast pass. And I thought that I had broken my toe because it like swelled up and went a different color. And I was like screaming and I called the doctor's surgery and I was like, Hey, like, do you have any like appointments today? And she was like, no, you fucking idiot. Like, why do you think there'd be a doctor's appointment today? You dumbass. Also, why are you calling on Tuesday midday? Don't you have a job? <laughs> she didn't say that, but that's what I got from that. And I was like, Oh, I think I just broke my toe. And she was like, Oh, then you should probably go to the hospital. And I was like, you know what? Honestly, you're right. Did I go to the hospital? No. And I'm fine. So we still don't know what happened there. I am double jointed. So maybe something happened with that. Like I popped it out and popped it back in. That's so X-Men. I feel like double jointed people are the X-Men of the real world. Let's think about that for a second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's all you need to know. I fell over a few times. Yeah, some stuff happened. I was on stage with Rina Sawayama. Great. <laughs> I went to the Arias. Great. Um, I met Muna a couple of weeks ago. Right. Um, you know, just standard, like standard things, like nothing exciting really, like, you know. Um, but what I wanted to talk about in this podcast episode is... Also, I will talk about the Rena stuff, obviously. Like, let's not play games right now. Like, be serious. Um, I wanted to talk about my move from apartment two to apartment three, which is where I am now, apartment three. And the numbering is this is the third apartment that I've been in since I moved to Melbourne. Um, The moving process every time makes me want to rip my face off. Not an exaggeration. And I feel like that's a very understandable feeling towards moving. I think a lot of people feel the same way. It's just horrifying. It's just horrifying. And for some reason, it just keeps getting worse. And I don't understand how that's possible. Because every time I think it's the worst, the next move gets worse. And I'm like, what is going on here? So the good thing is I have so many stories associated with this move and my old apartment. So I'm going to be running my fucking mouth. God. And I'm excited. I'm excited about that. I'm excited to be back on the podcast. I got some shit to say, honestly, like truly so much shit to say. Like I'm literally just looking at my desk my third PlayStation 5 remote because I broke two from mashing the left controller stick so hard that it went into drift. Like the controller started... the control, Why am I talking like that? The controller started drifting, bitch. This is not GTA. I got controller stick drift because I was playing so ferociously and fiercely. I was playing so snatched and fierce boots, Overwatch and Genshin Impact that I fucked up the remote. Like literally like if I would load up Genshin Impact, then... I'd be playing as Raiden and she'd be like running to the left of the screen, like literally just sprint off a cliff. Or like if I was playing Overwatch, I couldn't even select the game mode because the fucking menu would just be like, because it kept thinking I was holding down the left stick. Oh yeah, that was fun. Anyway, pro tip, if you get controller stick drift, go to JB Hi-Fi if you're in Australia, or I think that is maybe Best Buy. 
in the States. And then in the UK, like Babes You're On Your Own, I don't know. Everywhere else, I don't know. Like that's not my business. Like, um, But at JB, I told the guy that I was having this issue that was my third controller. And he was like, Babes, like I'll chuck in this warranty, which means if it happens in the next year, then it falls under Sony warranty. If it happens in year two and three, then it's in a JB warranty and they just like do a replacement, like a full replacement for free. So that was great. And it costs like $10. So this legend icon dropped the price $10 and then added the warranty on. So I didn't actually pay any, pay any more than what was listed. Right. Right. Um, why was I talking about that? Yeah. Cause it's on my desk. If you could see the desk right now, so just a little sample. I've got a little um, AO NCT one two seven Taeyong photo card, right? Um, I have a poker chip because I'm writing a casino heist movie, right? Um, what else do I have? Just like a bunch of shit, really. So yeah, there's lots to talk about. Um, I'm looking at the Glee board right now. The Glee board made it through the move. I do think that the Glee board is somewhat blessed and cursed because since I made the Glee board, so much bizarre shit has happened. So, but like good bizarre and bad bizarre. Like I'm talking meeting Rina Soyama. Good. My downstairs neighbor being in the elevator with a hunting knife. Bad. Right. Um, also, for the Patreon girlies, I will be putting up a little bit extra content. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, this episode's shout out Chainsaw. Right. Long time supporter of the podcast. A believer. True believer, if you will. Um, my wish for you in this podcast episode is that when you're moving a whiteboard, you make sure you take the lock off the wheels. And if you're listening and you're like, what the fuck? Like, I don't need to know that. I think you do. Like if you are moving a whiteboard and you pull it and the wheels are locked, she is going to flip. Like it was bad when the movers were trying to move the glee board and she nearly flipped over onto the PLL wall. Like the scenes, guys, the scenes, it was bad. Anyway, the only like small thing that happened on the board was that Britney S. Pierce got ripped on one side and the movie was like, I'm so sorry about Britney, just out of nowhere. And I was like, what? And he's like, oh, Britney, on your board. Because I gave no explanation, by the way. They were kind of like, what the fuck? What the fuck does this person do? Why have you got this shrine to Pretty Little Liars? They didn't know that it was Pretty Little Liars. I didn't, honestly don't even know what they thought I was doing. They probably thought that it was real people. And I had like a board of real people. And then on top of the real people pictures of the board, I just had like describing words for them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, in hindsight, that's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. <sighs> All right, so let's talk about this apartment building that I was in. So I'm going to tell you where it was. Actually, no, I'm not going to tell you where it was. I'm not going to tell you where it was. I'm going to tell you that it was a two bedroom apartment and the second room I used for office things. And then I slept in the first room. Right. Right. Um, it was a nice apartment. I liked it. There were some issues with it, but at the same time, like, it was a nice apartment, full stop, point blank, right? Uh, would I have bought that apartment? No, absolutely not. It falls into that category of Melbourne builds that I don't think are finished. Like, for example, if I tapped the wall, it literally felt like it was going to collapse because it was just paper mache. Or like the fucking carpets in that apartment. Oh my God. Evil, evil, evil demon cancer carpet. I think there's carpet in my lung. I'm going to have some kind of lung cancer carpet. Ca what? Carpet, lung can cancer? Lung carpet cancer? What? I think it's fucked me up, basically, is what I'm trying to say. The fibres would go everywhere. 
Like literally I would open my moisturizer and there would be carpet fibers and I would vacuum it like so often and just like constant fibers coming out of the carpet literally infuriating like even when i was pulling the blue tack of the pll wall off yeah the pll wall's gone can we not talk about that but as i was pulling that blue tack off it had like carpet in it let's be fucking serious you know what i mean um but yeah the apartment itself great it had a key and a fob i'm anti-fob i am anti-fob fob situation i'm not enjoying that it's kind of like when cars they're trying to like make the cars so technological that they're taking physical buttons out and putting them on the touch screen like taking the volume controls off the display like the um what's the fucking word i'm looking for you know what i mean at the front and they're putting them as like touch things on the touch screen that is crusty and bad. And I don't like that because you're driving. You don't want to be like beep, 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 bitch, like trying to get the volume control down. Do you know what I mean? Like that's so unnecessary. Just put a fucking dial. It's like with fobs. I'm like, is this really adding a lot to my experience? Like I would use a fob in the elevator to go to my floor, but then using a fob to get in the door crusty. In fact, the power went out one time and because fobs use electricity, they didn't work. And you need a fob to get into the main building. So a friend of mine who lives in the same building, she was stuck outside and there was no way to get in. So she had to go like walk down the street and find one of her friend's houses to stay in. Is that not ridiculous? Like what? Anyway. So this apartment building, I think there was something... Mm, I had a certain, hmm, I had a certain je ne sais quoi, uh, mm, <laughs> like crime element. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was a few times when I felt unsafe and that's not new. Like if you're walking around the city at night, I think you're bound to feel unsafe. That's just city living, hashtag city living, hashtag city life, hashtag big city rat life like rat running down the 86 tram on TikTok, like that kind of vibe. But if you asked me when I moved to that suburb where apartment two was, if I thought someone was going to be running at me covered in blood swinging a concrete bollard, if you asked me that, I'd be like, no, not in that suburb, maybe in another suburb, not that suburb. Well, that happened, right? I walked out of the elevator and I opened the door and then this man with blood all down his like left arm and like wearing a white singlet and jeans and he was like, jaw was like fucking swinging. He starts running towards me, swinging like a concrete bollard thing. And I was just kind of like, why is this happening? I think that day maybe I was just trying to go to Woolworths probably to buy musk lollies. I had a severe, severe musk lollies phase. So I think maybe that was when that happened. And he was just like sprinting at me, swinging a bollard, a scary sight. And then I was like, no. So I started like walking back into the um, building. It's kind of like if you are confronted by a wild animal, you don't run. You kind of just like act chill. So this wild, like, jaw swinging man was like running at me with a bollard and I just started like, oh, I'm going to go back into the building. He was like, don't fucking go back inside. And I was like, I'm going to do that. So then I went back inside and I locked the main door and I just went out the other door. Like I didn't go back upstairs to my apartment. I just went out the other side. I was like, bitch, I want my, my fucking musk lollies. And I don't think he had the brain cells at the time to realize it was another entrance to the building. So I was safe. And that was that on that. So that was that time. Um, there was the time when one of the upstairs neighbors was <laughs> like, I don't know if it's a consuming situation or a procuring situation or a distributing situation. But let's just say there are rumors that someone had a large quantity of meth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And 
all these things that I'm saying, they are speculation. It's speculation. Like I could be talking shit right now. It's just speculation. I love to speculate. Um, And that's one of the things that I heard is that someone had a large amount of meth in their possession. So that's fun. Um, This same person, I'm pretty sure they got kicked out of the building. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. They got evicted because one time someone went into the elevator and there was just a naked man in the elevator. And this man had like no idea what was going on. He was clearly on something and he was very confused, very disorientated and just like walking around the apartment building just completely naked. And it turned out that he had been in the apartment with person X, (laughs) Professor X. (laughs) He was in Professor X's apartment and then that happened and then a couple of other things happened and this person got evicted. And then we had this like meth tea kind of thing. So that was fun. Um, But then there was the time when I got home quite late and there was me in the elevator and another person in the elevator and their floor was lower than my floor and they were exiting the elevator first. So we're both in there. They got off at their floor and there were two scary men at his floor that the second he stepped out, they're like, are you da 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 da? And they said a name. I can't remember what it was. And he was like, uh, no. And like, da, 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 da. And they're like yelling at him. And I was like, I'm not about this. So I just shut the doors. And then I went upstairs to my floor. Yeah. So that was fun. That was the same night that there was randomly just a car in the alleyway with all the lights on in the car, the boot open and all the doors were open. Mm-hmm. Not suspicious at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Um, yeah, and then, you know, just the usual, uh, there was one of the people in the building was in the elevator with a hunting knife, breathing heavily. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, oh, this was a good one. Again, speculation. I was, like, cleaning the floor of the apartment because I was moving out, and I could hear, like, this kerfuffle a kerfuffle outside and I am nosy. So I opened one of the windows and I was like, have you a little listen? Like if, sorry, if you're going to have an altercation in my earshot, I'm going to listen. Like that's my right. That's my right to eavesdrop. Do you know what I mean? Like anyway, so then what I could supposedly hear was supposedly someone in the alleyway begging up to the balcony of someone in the apartment building being like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll get you the money. I didn't mean to, I'll get you the money. Please, please. Mm-hmm. And there's just me like mopping a floor, listening to Glitch. Like a glitch. Dun, 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 dun. So that was good. What else? Oh, the bike and the running. Yeah, got home late one time, was walking from the tram and there was this person again on something just like doing circles around the intersection and it was dead. Like there was no like people or cars or anything. And I needed to cross this intersection to get to where my apartment building was. And he locked eyes on me and he just started like really going at it on the bike coming towards me. And I said, fuck this, fuck you. Fuck this world I'm living. And I was like, no, that's fucking it. Goodbye. And I sprinted. I sprinted probably maybe like, how far would it have been? Maybe like 400 metres-ish, like a block and a half. And yeah, I outran a scary man on a bike, which in hindsight, yeah, that was iconic. That was actually so iconic of me. But I was in running era and this was pre-fall. It was the pre-fall collection and by pre-fall, I mean pre being strewn across the intersection. Yeah. Uh, that was during my like ultimate tram era. You guys know I love a tram situation. I love the tram. I love the tram. Trams, hashtag trams for life. I love public transport. 
No, I love trains and trams from a science and engineering perspective. Buses, oh, I just can't get around the bus. Like I have a friend who's ride or die bus fan and she was telling me why the bus is so good. And she was saying how to get from her apartment to the city, it would take her, let's say, 40 minutes on the tram. Sorry, 40 minutes on the train, an hour on the tram or 20 minutes by bus because the bus goes on the freeway. And I was like, that's all well and good, but I just don't vibe. I don't fuck with the bus. Like I don't fuck with the bus. I think maybe that's because I was a bus kid for school. So I would catch the bus after school every day in uh, Fremantle for my WA listeners. And that was truly an experience. I felt like I saw everything under the sun during that. Uh, That was the kind of time period where I had, what did I have? It wasn't an iPod touch. It was, I did have an iPod touch, but this was before that. It was kind of that square one. Not the iPad Classic and not the iPad Nano. Anyway, it was kind of squarish, had a rectangular screen, it had the circle dial. And this is when I would just listen to Black Eyed Peas endlessly and sometimes maybe some Lady Gaga. But mostly Black Eyed Peas. And I just have like the earphones in just watching shit unfold on the bus. Good times, good times. But yeah, I love trams. But something, something has happened. The trams have gotten beyond feral. Has science gone too far? Maybe. Have trams gone too far? Some would say not far enough. The trams could go further. But yeah, God, modes of transport. Now I'm just thinking about all these bloody stories. My fucking bike. Oh, the bitch. My bike, the bitch bike, basically. I think when I spoke about the bike on the podcast last, I was loving bike life. I was having such a great time with my bike life. My last bike experience. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Basically, I had the bike at the old apartment. And to go from old apartment to new apartment, I have to cross the river, which means go through the city. And, oh God, this is so bad. So... Let's say if I was riding the bike, it would probably take me 25 minutes-ish. However, the saga begins with me arriving at apartment two, as in the old apartment, and I had left the bike pump at the new apartment. You might be wondering, why did you take the bike pump if you didn't take the bike? Excellent question. Do I have the answer? No. So... I had flat tires. So I went and bought another bike pump. Annoying fucking purchase. You know, when like, like it's such an annoying purchase. Like it's not expensive. I think it ended up being maybe $20 for the fucking cheapest pump they had at this bike place. That wasn't just disastrously bad. But I had one. But in order to go get my one, it would be like two hours to go on the public transport back and the public transport again. And who fucking knows where this pump was. So I have to look for it as well. So I was like, I'm just going to cop the $20 and buy the pump. So I buy the pump and I go down to the basement where the bike is and I'm filling up the bike tires. Then the fucking pump breaks in half. Like it just like bursts open from the pressure. I think I was pumping too much air into the tire. Lol. Too many PSIs, babe. Too many PSIs. And the pieces of the bike pump just went everywhere in the basement and the basement has all these lockers with everyone's stuff in it. So they just rolled under people's shit. So somehow I managed to get my hand under these locker doors to get all the little pieces of the pump back, to put the pump back together to pump the bike tires. Great. Love that. So I pumped the bike tires. At this point, I'm sweating up a fucking storm. Melbourne's doing some fucking 179% humidity. It's basically just soup. And mind you, I was looking snatched. So I was like sweaty snatched. You know, when you're like, you're wearing like a baggy shirt, this is so like Jessica Alba, like honey. You know what I mean? Like the baggy shirt, but you're sweaty. So it sticks to you. And like, if you've got the tone situation going on, it's like, oh my God, 
Do you know what I mean? So that was kind of what was happening. Like I was serving a little bit baggy tea, cargo pant situation. So like I wasn't mad about it. Uh, so I started my journey. Yeah. And the thing about me and riding my bike is I am bike lanes and paths. I'm not roads. I'm just not about that. Like some people ride through the city on the city roads. And to me, that is unbelievable. And I'm, I just, wow, kudos to you. Do you know what I mean? Like it could not be me and it's not me. That's the thing. So I will stick to the status quo and I'll do bike lanes and I'll get off the bike and I'll walk on the path. So I crossed where Flinders is. So basically like this big train station and it has like these walking paths, not really for riding a bike. So I got off and I walked it. At some point in this little pilgrimage from the fucking apartment to past the train station, I think I popped the tire. How did I know this? Because... When I tried to get back on the bike again, it was just like rubber on the ground. Like it was just rubber and the tire rim. Like it was bad. Like it was crunchy. So I like swung my leg over with this bag full of paint. Oh my God, the paint. Oh my God. Okay. Anyway, so I like got on the bike and I tried to ride the bike and I was like, shit, I can't ride it. So I got back off and I was walking the bike again. Next thing you know It's like the fucking seas have parted and every single person in Australia has decided to walk in the direction that I'm trying to ride. You might be wondering, oh, like, cut the shit. Like, it's not that serious. I bet there's maybe 10 people walking on the road. No. This was like round one football and I'm pretty sure both teams were like Melbourne teams, Richmond and maybe Carlton. So everyone in Melbourne was walking along this road to the MCG, which is where the football is. And there was me on my, (laughs) walking my fucking bike to the MCG. Cause that's where I had to cross to get up to past the city. Oh my gosh. So I remember thinking when I was walking my bike and amongst these like huge crowds of people walking in the same direction, it literally felt like the scene in Hunger Games Mockingjay part two, where they're all walking towards the capital. Like I remember thinking that. Good fucking bye. Anyway, so I get past this stadium where everyone like goes off and watches their little footy. Enjoy your little footy. Um, and then there's a hill. I'm like, all right, I can make it through. I'll just ride up the hill. I'll just ride my flat bike up the hill. No, no, like that did not happen. I got on the bike and I reckon I made it two pushes. And the bike said, bitch, get the fuck off me. So I had to get off and walk the bike the whole way in the soup weather. And it took me like an hour and a half when it should have taken 20 minutes. Was I mad? Yeah. Did I have paint in my bag? Yeah. Why did I have paint in my bag? Because I was taking these pictures that are behind me now. I was taking them off the wall and it was all going good. Wasn't leaving any marks because I was using blue tack. And then I got too cocky and I just started ripping them off and I chipped the paint. So I had to patch the paint with um, spac filler. Guys, I'm so handy. I'm so DIY, you don't understand. Anyway, so I bought the spec filler and I patched it up. Then I needed to buy the paint. And I went to Bunnings and I said, here's the paint name that's in the contract that I signed when I started leasing this apartment. Can I get a little tub of this so I can paint the things? He was like, yep, cool. He mixes it up. I come back and I start painting the wall and it is not at all the same color. If the wall was white, this was like a light gray. Like it was so dark compared to the wall. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just drying like that. And once it's dry, it'll look the same. So I came back the next day with the bike to get the bike. And it was just like a different fucking color. So I went to a different paint shop and I was like, what, what is going on here? Like, did I do something wrong? And I brought the paint that I got from Bunnings and the guy at this Mitre 10, a different store, he was like, They gave you the wrong color. Like they mixed it wrong. They added too much of one color in there and it got too dark. So I was like, right, right. So then I bought this new paint, came back and painted it. Great. Excellent. So excellent and gorgeous. I love how I'm telling the story backwards when in actual fact it was paint then bicycle. But before paint and bicycle, we had 
the moving out extravaganza eleganza ball. And this was truly something. It was truly something. So I don't have a car. And this, the distance between apartment two and apartment three, very much a car situation. For context, from apartment one to apartment two, it was walkable. So me being the absolute cheap ass that I am, I just walked all my stuff. It took weeks. <laughs> it took weeks. And I just filled up like bags, like a few bags a day. And then I'll just like walk them to the new apartment from the old one and then like work from the new apartment and then go back and like blah, 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 blah. Um, but from two to three, it was not a DIY situation. So we needed a car and or we needed to get a moving truck. So we decided to get movers. We, because my sister moved from Perth to Melbourne. And as I said before, I had a two bedroom apartment and I was using both bedrooms. So sister was sister squatting. She was sleeping on the couch. She didn't have a room. Uh, So yeah, that was a bit tricky. So then we needed a new place. Getting the place, ooh, yeah, that was really fun. That process was so fun and I will be talking about that. But as I just said, we're we're working backwards. So with the movers, this is where I introduce apartment three. So apartment three had this fun little situation where it was a new build. So technically I'm like the first tenant in this apartment in this building and there was a bunch of issues that restricted me from moving in on my lease start date the commencement date so because of that it was really hard to lock down a date for the movers to be able to move the stuff in so blah 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 we get the move in date now there was three parties involved there's apartment three management which uh, had to coordinate when I was allowed to move in. Then there was apartment two building management, which had to coordinate the lift usage. And then there was the movers. So those were the three parties. And the apartment three people were sorted, the movers were sorted. Then I was trying to contact the building management to reserve the lift because they had to put some shit on the lift so you didn't bang the fucking... Mirror in the lift. What the... Anyway. Anyway, they weren't replying. I couldn't contact them. So then I had to... Well, my sister had to call the mover and be like, Hey, like, I know you're supposed to be here tomorrow morning, but like, we're going to have to cancel because we can't schedule this elevator shit. This elevator love... I'm pretty sure that's like a Guy Sebastian song. Anyway... So we reschedule it. I managed to organize the lift, blah, 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 blah. Great. The movers are supposed to come at, I want to say 9 a.m., 9 or 10 a.m. So I get everything ready, da, 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 da. Then they call me and they're like, oh, we're going to be a couple of hours late. Cool, whatever. It gets like 1.30 and they're still not there. And I'm like, right. They got caught up on something. So I can't even, I can't get mad. Like it wasn't their fault that the previous job went for so long. So I wasn't mad at them. Uh, so it ended up happening around about three o'clock ish. And they were moving the stuff out. All great, all fantastic. And then the fucking elevator breaks. Oh my God. Someone jumped in that elevator too hard. And it fucking broke. My God. So at this point, I would say maybe 60% of my stuff was still in the apartment. 40% was down in the truck. It goes down in the DM, famously, as Nikki said. Uh, Oh, this was so infuriating. So half the stuff was downstairs, half was upstairs. The movers were upstairs. Their gear was upstairs. The elevator breaks. 
the doors wouldn't shut. Like you could get in the elevator, but the doors wouldn't shut. So it would keep opening at the same floor. So we couldn't go anywhere. So then I had to like contact the building management to come work out what was wrong with the elevator. Then they had to call the elevator fucking fucking people, service people to come fix the elevator. And this whole process started to take like a long time. So I think I waited three hours. Now, mind you, during this three hours, the movers couldn't move, right? Because they couldn't use the elevator and the stuff was too heavy to take down the stairs. So for three hours, we were just kind of waiting around and these movers were charging like a normal rate, but still, it was still expensive. And by the time you factor in three hours of extra time, it really starts to get up there. So I was fucking infuriated because we couldn't get the thing fixed. And I had to go. Like I had to go. And do you know why I had to go? Why did I have to go? Because I had a concert, bitch. I had a concert. Yes. Wait, which concert was it? It was an iconic one. Charlie, bitch. It was the Charlie concert. Oh my God. The Charlie concert was so good. Oh. It was like the last show of the Crash Tour. And it was so fucking fantastic. She was so good. Oh my God. She was so good. Oh, that was such a good show. And there was like, I met someone from um, Vice and they were taking photos of people's outfits for uh, like a cute little article. So I ended up having my picture in Vice and I was wearing a beret. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. That was such a good concert. Anyway, I was late to that because of this drama with the elevator. So we decide, okay, the stuff that's already in the truck, we'll take it over to the new apartment and then we'll have to reschedule and come back tomorrow and get the rest of it. So we get in the truck and we start driving. Then there's some bullshit going on in the city and what should have been like a 20 minute drive turns into an hour and 20 drive, which was fun because I was just chatting shit with the movers in their van and we were just like covering so many topics. It was actually so much fun. Like we were just running our fucking mouths. And the thing about me is I can run my mouth about basically anything. If we have literally anything in common, I can run my mouth. And I think that's an underrated skill. So we were chatting shit. They were actually so fun, the movers. Did I pay a lot of money? Yes. Because they had to come back the next day to move the rest of the stuff. And they ca- they came back and the elevator fucking broke again. <sighs> but this time we kind of worked out how to fix it. What happened was there was like uh, part of the elevator padding that they put up for the move out was restricting the door sensor, not the actual doors. The door was closing fine, but the sensor was like, uh, now there is someone there. So we ended up fixing that and getting all the stuff out. Great. Love that. Now, while all this was happening, my minions magnet from Singapore that my sister bought me had fused to the range hood. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's just say getting that off was a struggle. But we managed to succeed and it was making me piss myself laughing, thinking about if I couldn't get it off and it had truly fused and become one with the range hood because then when the leasing people went through, they'd be like, what the fuck is this? And why is it not on there? Gosh. My sister just texted me to say she can hear someone playing the H2O just at water theme song. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that was that. That was fun. What's the next part of the moving backwards process? Okay. Trying to find a place. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
the rental market. Mm. Rental market, if you're listening to this, if I catch you in the street, you better run the fucking other way because I'm going to beat you up. Jesus. First of all, I think you can kind of gather how I feel about landlords. Landlords and I, we don't really see eye to eye. That's not to say that there's definitely landlords listening to this. And if you're a landlord, I hope you're a nice one. Otherwise, I'm going to have to beat you up. Sorry, that's just the rules. Is there such a thing as a nice landlord? Mm. Mm-hmm. Survey says, not in my experience, but I'm sure there's some nice ones out there. I actually, like, I know people who have property and they're, like, nice. So I don't see why they wouldn't be nice landlords. But just with my experiences so far, it's just been not very fun. Let's just say that. Um, but when I was looking for a bigger rental for my sister and I, we went all around the towns, singing all around the towns and stuff. And we had some really fun experiences. Let me tell you about that. The first experience being mold. So we went to inspect a townhouse in North Melbourne that was listed for, drum roll please, I want to say 1300 a week, which is pretty fucking hefty. Do you remember that plot line in Pretty Little Liars when A would call Hannah hefty Hannah? Don't piss me off. So we went to look at this $1,300 townhouse, which is fucking outrageously expensive. And it had mold. Yeah, it had mold. And it was de fucking disgusting. Disgusting, disgusting, de fucking disgusting. And I'm pretty sure it went the next week because that's how bad the market was that you could put literally anything up there, charge some insane price, have mold in it, and someone would still rent it because that's how bad the supply was. Oh, God. Some of the place is just ridiculous. And then, oh, oh, this shit makes me so mad. And, like, I get that if you own an apartment or if you own a townhouse or whatever the fuck and the interest rates are going up, then your repayments are going up. I get that. But, like, I also know how much the interest rates are going up and the price increases on these rentals are not matching. So you're profiting off increasing the rates above, sorry, increasing the rental prices above what the rate increase is. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. But I will say my apartment two was price X when I started renting. It's listed for almost 1.5 times what it was. So it's fucking ridiculous. And that's in the space of two years. Like be fucking real. Anyway. So then with that in mind and with rents being so high, especially when you are looking at, you know, two plus bedrooms, it gets really pricey. So it's kind of like, okay, well maybe if I can get money together for a deposit, then maybe that's what I need to do. And I need to be a purchaser. I need to be purchasing. So at the end of last year, I was in the mindset of like, wow, I'm going to enter my inspection houses to buy era. I can't afford it yet, but at least if I'm looking around, I'll know things that I'm like, mm, that's cute. Or like I'll find something be like, I hate that. So I started going to like look at home opens and the prices made me, again, wanted to rip my face off. And for example, I went to this one that was in a really cute area. Really nice area. And the place was nice. It was like a conversion, warehouse conversion kind of thing. 
and there was a bunch of like townhouse unit things in the same warehouse. And But this you wouldn't have been the first person to have owned it. I think I had a previous owner since the conversion. And the first thing you see when you walk in there, on the table is this sign. And the sign says, if you bought this property as an investment, you could charge this amount per week. And I'm like, fuck you. Fuck you. All you crusty old people with all this fucking cash in Melbourne. Oh, my God. They're everywhere. They are everywhere. I was like walking around this apartment and there's all these people walking around, not looking to buy it for themselves, looking to buy it purely to make money off it by renting it out. Like I get that you're doing that to make money, but it just sucks. And you're crusty. Like you're crusty if you're doing that. Why? Like it all boils down to I'm mad because I want it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Anyway, I could never have afforded that house. Lol. But it was on auction. And the price range was in the one millions kind of thing. One to two million. And it ended up selling before the auction for $300,000 above the like listed range. Like, be fucking serious. Who is buying these houses? Who is buying the houses? Outrageous. Outrageous. When the party. Outrageous. Um, so that was fun. Took ages to find one that wasn't diabolical. But we got there. Like, we got there. What's another fun story from that? psychotic apartment building. Oh, I had like a bunch of different neighbors through my stint there. There was the couple that fought all the time. There was cute dog number one, cute dog number two, cute dog number three. Cute dog number three was not on my floor though, but we talked, me and the dog. Um, What else would happen? Like so much crime vibes, I would say. It really opened my eyes to how much crime there is. (laughs) And like in that area, I do want to say what the area is, but I also don't, so I won't. But I will say, I didn't expect this area to have such like an unsafe vibe at night. But sometimes when I was like coming home from events and stuff or whatever, I would be like, oh my God. I think it ends tonight because I think someone's going to snatch me. I'm going to get hashtag snatched. And it's not like that was without warrant because there was, again, people chasing me on bikes. There was random men in the elevator. There was (laughs) all this shit going on. But you know, it's just a bit of fun, right? Yeah. It's just a bit of fun. Um, I think that the rental market needs, it needs Jesus, truly. It needs Jesus. Um, Something that keeps popping into my head while I'm talking about this whole process is fucking Twitter. How do these things correlate? Because like, Twitter was collapsing in real time while all this shit was happening. Like I would, some fucking moving trauma would happen and then I would open Twitter just to be like, oh my God, decompress on Twitter.com on the Bird app and then it just like would break or Elon Musk had done some other shit. Oh, he's blocked by the way. I blocked him. (sighs) Crusty. I want a blocking spree. Also like a muting words spree. There's some topics that I'm like, oh, like we're doing this again. (laughs) Like, for example, the TikTok ban in the United States. I'm like, oh, my God, this again. Did we forget what happened last time? It was like some tactic for voting. Was it Trump? Maybe it was like, I'm going to ban TikTok. La, 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 la. So then everyone was like, 
follow me on Instagram. Follow me on blah, blah, blah. Follow la, 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 follow la, 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 la. Like every single day, it'd be all that shit all over TikTok. And then it didn't end up getting banned. Now it's happening again and it's all going everywhere. I'm like, oh, does your country ever stop having issues? <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't mean it like that. Uh, every country has SLs. Uh, but it's like if TikTok got banned in Australia, would you give a shit? Probably not. So should I give a shit if a TikTok gets banned in your country? <laughs> no, I do care, guys. Like, I do care. I do. I do. Uh, um, you know what? Maybe for this episode, I will round it out by talking about my Rena experience. Because that was truly... A life highlight. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what happened was someone on Rena's team contacted me and they're basically like, are you in Melbourne on these dates? Because Rena would like to do something with you. Maybe it's like make content, maybe introduce her on stage. Something like that. So I was like, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, town, obviously. And if I wasn't, I'd fucking get my ass to town. And as we got closer to the date, turns out Rena wanted me to introduce her Melbourne show. And I was fucking collapsing. Like the buildings at the end of Inception on the beach. Because what the fuck... Like, Rena asked for me by name to introduce her Melbourne show. What the fuck? What the fuck? Let's not forget that... Oh, like, I had the Rena hat that blew off when someone was spitting on me and crossing the road and the phone cracking and all that shit. Limited edition Rena Sawayama hat. Fucking hell. Outrageous. <sighs> So basically what happened was I introduced Rena on stage at her Melbourne show. And it wasn't like, ladies and gentlemen, Rena Sawayama. It was literally like she wanted me to say a few things, like gave me some points. And she was also like, say fucking anything, like do what you want. <laughs> and I was like, bet. <laughs> so I basically did a little five minute stand up set. I was on the stage. At, I think it's called Billboard. It's like 170 Russell maybe in Melbourne CBD. And I was on the fucking stage with the crowd there. And then I introduced Rena. It was insane. And I was like, oh yeah, I was nervous. And then I was very nervous right before I walked on because I could see everyone. And I'd never been on a stage like that before at all. Like, why, why would I have been on that stage? Do you know what I mean? Like, and I stepped out and I stepped up. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really did. And I just wasn't nervous anymore. And I didn't stutter at all. And I had so much fun. Everyone was so nice. And it kind of made me want to get back on the fucking stage again. So maybe we'll have like a stand-up era or something because that was so much fun. And I was gagged beyond belief when I stepped out and like people were like cheering. And I was like, you actually know who I am? Good fucking bye. It was outrageous. I still can't believe that happened. And then... This is like the collapse of the century. I met Rena herself. Now, listeners of the podcast, let me tell you something. Rena Sawayama is one of the coolest, nicest, most slay, talented, smart, and just like iconic people I've ever met. Like she just slayed this show beyond belief. Like the vocals were just out of this world. And then she gets off stage and she's like chatting to all these people. And then she chats to me 
And she's like, just, oh, I, I still can't believe that happened. What? She signed my vinyls. Do I have them here? I put them in the other cupboard. In the secret cupboard. You can't have them. Does that sound like something you want? Well, you can't have them. So I brought my uh, Soyama Deluxe, the gold vinyl. Not just the gold case. It's the special edition gold vinyl. And she signed it. And she said, To Mike, slayed so hard it lost all meaning. Love, Rena. Bitch. That is... So as you know, we have the MMCU, the Mike's Mike Cinematic Universe. We need to coin a term for important artifacts. Actually, we'll just call it MMCU artifacts. That is an MMCU artifact. You know what else is? The Hold the Girl signed vinyl. I think on that one she wrote to Mike from Rena, love ya or something. The Collapse. Are you fucking joking? So she signed the vinyls and then we made some TikToks. Yes. I made some TikToks with Rina Sawayama. And she was so nice about it. And she was so funny. And she like was on top of all the trends and everything. And she understood all the references and all that kind of stuff. Just iconic. Like, oh my God. Rina, if you're listening <laughs> and you ever need help with TikTok stuff, babes, let me know. Because that TikTok that we made, it like did a milli. Did a milli on the talk. And then the sound got removed because it had The Boys by Girls Generation S- SNSD in it. But bring the boys out. Yeah. And all this came from that fucking Slay Audio because we used that Slay Audio as well. And do you remember when I went to London and then, I don't know, if, why would you remember this? Anyway, I went to London and I was in the tube and I was walking out of the tube and then my phone started blowing up because Rena had used my audio. That was the beginning. That, that is where this all stemmed from. Outrageous. Moral of the story is... Just <laughs> upload fucking anything to the internet. You never know what's going to happen. You could meet Rena Sawayama. Wow. Bruh, 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 bruh. Just like so bruh. I don't think I made an episode after the Arias either. That's probably for another time. Talk about the Arias. But basically like that was crazy as well. What the hell? And I really feel like I really represent the duality because like I'm going to these cool events and meeting these really cool people and I'm still crusty. And I feel like that is so like empowering for the other crusties out there. Like I am crusty and I am doing fun stuff. So you can be crusty and do fun stuff too. Like my sister and I sometimes walk around and we see all these cool young people or people our age doing cool stuff and like hanging out with their friends. And we feel so inferior because we're like, wait, we don't fit in. Like we just don't fit in with these crowds because they're so like cool and we don't feel cool near them. But I'm like, well, we are cool and we do cool things and we can still be crusty because that's the duality. Right. Right. Um, the last thing I'm going to say, because it's been on my mind since Thursday, KFC hot and crispy, hot and crispy boneless. Mm-hmm. Really good. But I had a mini trauma because I got the KFC three pieces. I don't know why I'm talking about this. You probably like end this fucking episode, bitch, but I'm going to run my mouth. I bought the three piece hot and crispy and it was like $4.95 or something. And the machine was broken. So I had to order at the counter. No issue. The worker was there and I have an affinity. Like the workers and I have an affinity. Any kind of like service worker, we see each other. Because I have been in the trench as well, famously. Mind you, the last time I've 
spoke about my trench experiences at said burger company with apostrophe. I did it in a TikTok and it blew up. And the next day the sound was muted for copyright. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that so interesting? Anyway, so this worker and I were like, I thought we saw eye to eye. I thought we got each other. And he took my orders all good. Then I'm walking away and I see on the counter, you could get six hot and crispy pieces for $4.95. It was like a special, like the just for that night. And he didn't say anything. What? He didn't say anything. And I thought we were allies, but it turns out I, what I thought was my ally was my enemy. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. It was so traumatizing. Like, mind you, those hot and crispy pieces were so fucking delicious. Mm, I want them now. No, I don't. That's a lie. I want something sweet. And I'll get it. And I will. But yeah, that was fun. Thank you all for listening. If you, what do I say? At the end of these, uh, if you aren't subscribed to the podcast channel, go and do that. That'd be cute. Uh, if you are listening to this on your little like streaming, like Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever, feel free to leave me a review. That'd be cute too. And if you're watching the video version on YouTube, feel free to like it, leave a comment. Yeah. But I'm so excited to be back running my mouth. And if there's like topics you want me to talk about, feel free to put them in the comments. I have actually recorded the next episode already. It's a fun little chat with one of my besties, like one of my most fashionable besties. She's like so switched on to like style and all that kind of thing. So that was fun to chat to her. So that should be out soon. But if you have episode things you want me to talk about or like albums to deep dive on or tv shows to talk about that kind of thing movies then put them in the comments or you can try and dm me on instagram but fucking instagram updated their like sorting and filtering thing for dm so it's literally just like a free-for-all in there these fucking apps bro sort your shit out <laughs> anyway thank you all for listening and I hope you have a good week and I'll talk to you soon. Peace out. Bye.